As I said, Alex is here, I have to give intro, right? That's right. I'll say this, someone who undergraduate Yale, <laughs> right, and graduate from Harvard Law, Law School, School, to you it will be a piece of cake you're <laughs> going to study today, right? No. Especially the law background, <laughs> that's <laughs> really yeah. helped. If it's easy, it's only because I have three great scholars to help me. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, yesterday, we talk about Levi and Rebbe. Levi lived at the era of the beginning of the Amoraim, the early part of the Amoraim. It was a bridge between the Tanaic era and Amoraic era. Levi was a great scholar. And he asked a question, how come the Mishnah gave us a list of 15 cases and not 16? Um, the Mishnah, the beginning of this tractate, gives us a list of 15 cases of women that exempt the rival and the rival of the rivals. Meaning, we explain that there are two different sources in the Torah. One is Leviticus 18, it gives us a list of abomination, we read it in Yom Kippur afternoon, all the prohibited relations within uh, three categories, we explain that there is a, one is blood relative, meaning father, daughter, etc. One is Isurei Chitun, father with daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, etc. Then we learn the concept of Shniot La'arayot, which is the mother of the mother, the mother of the father, etc. And then we learn Eshet Achiv Shelo Lamo, which means the um, surviving brother of the um, 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 the deceased, meaning a man married a woman and he passed with no children and his surviving brother was uh, basically commanded to do the act of Leverite while his another brother was born after the passing of the oldest brother. So, in short, we see a two um, conflicted text in the Torah. One is Deuteronomy 25 that said that um, it's a mitzvah for the uh, surviving brother to act in liberate marriage and marry the, um, the, um, the wife of the deceased um, versus the list of abomination. One of them is marrying the wife of the brother. And we explain that all those concepts apply solely from the uh, relationship from the father and not from the mother. So the Mishnah, in very short, gives us a list of 15 cases um, um, in three different levels, for sure, uh, as we said, but 15 cases that those women exempt their um, tzarot, their rivals, which means this is the second one, and the tzarot tzarotehem, from both, from act of Yibum and the act of Chalitza. Chalitza, in short, in the Torah 25, it tells us if there is a refusal of um, act in Leverite marriage, therefore there is a um, more in the act of symbolic, of taking off the shoes, etc., speeding, but the idea is, is a concept of release. So, upon that question, which is Levi ask. Rebbe, which was his teacher, and he said, how come the Mishnah not bring the case number 16, which soon you're going to hear? The Rebbe reacted, not overreacted, but reacted, and he said, I think that you don't have a brain to even ask that, and we explained that um, um, it wasn't personal, but it was uh, some kind of a question that Rebbe felt that it's inappropriate. Why? He talk about the case that it's called Imo Anusat Avim. The mother that she was basically a case of a, a rape, soon you're going to hear, from his father. Here is the case. Reuven, we're just using names, okay? Reuven was born as an act of a um, result of a rape, which means Yaakov, for our discussion, we're just using names, Yaakov rape a single woman. Single woman meaning she's not a married, etc. by the name of Rachel. And as a result, they have a beautiful baby boy. His name is Reuven. We have the breasts, every, everything is nice. 
But this fellow, Yaakov, has a child from the um, previous uh, whatever relationship that was named is Shimon. Now, Shimon is basically a child of Yaakov, but Rachel is not his mother. Now, Shimon come ahead when Yaakov passed away, and he went and he married Rachel, which is Anusat Aviv. She was the one who raped by his father. So basically, in our language, in a modern language, he is married to his stepmother. Now, Shimon passed with no children. So, again, met Belobanim, which means he died childless. Now, what happened is, she, it's called Nofelet Lifnei Reuven, now, in a way, Reuven, again, this is just hypothetically case, she um, come before Reuven for act of Levirite, but since she is the mother, she is his mother because she is the sister, she is the wife of his brother, half-brother, and she is Anusat Aviv, she was raped by his father. So this called Erva, that was the least, one of the least of the abomination. And the halacha is, Potrot Tsarot Sehem, they exempt these cases, their next case, their rival, Vetsarot Tsarot Sehem. So Levi come in, as a great Torah scholar, and he asks, how come this case not appear in a Mishnah? Why you don't have case number 16, this case? So this Rebbe reacting, and he said, come do Meli. I think that, that um, uh, yeah, he, he used the term, she'ein lo moach bekodkodo, he doesn't have a brain. Why are you asking this question? Why? So he explained yesterday, there is a, a concept that it's called Machloket, when it's a disputation. The Mishnah gives us a list of 15 cases that it's undisputable, which means cases, for example, blood, daughter, father, etc. Et These are cases that everyone agrees. Something that is in a subject of disputation, the Mishnah does not put in the list of the 15. So we learned yesterday that we have here a disputation between Rabbanan and Rabbi Yudah that they say that uh, they disputed over married of Anusat Aviv. Again, a case that his father raped someone, it's a disputation between Rabbanan, the sages, and Rabbi Yudah, if they, um, the son allow to marry or not. According to Rabbi Yudah, it's called Isu Lav, which means this is one of the relatively light prohibition in the Torah, but it is a prohibition because the Torah used the term lo yegale knaf aviv. You should not uncover the nakedness of his father. So in general, very general speaking, any woman that have any type of intercourse with a man, um, automatically the child from this man, even from previous marriage, is prohibited to um, um, have relation with her. The moment that the stepfather have relation with her, then automatically she is prohibited for the stepson. Okay? So with that said, Rabbi Yudha come in and he said, it's Isu Lav, that is a, a, a prohibited. Rabbanan came in, the sage said, he said it's not a problem, they can, they can get married. So you see here a subject of disputation which called Imo Anusat Aviv, mother that was basically a, a case of rape by his father. So according to Rabbi Yuda, Shimon is prohibited. Lo yegalek naf aviv, you should not uncover the nakedness of his father. And we said will be plugta lo amrinan, something that is disp in, the, in disputation cannot be the least of the 15 cases in the Mishnah. And then we brought Rabbi Chia. 
רבי חיא and he said, האסורה לזה מותרת לזה. The one that is prohibited to that one, she is allowed to the other one, uh, um, and, and, and also the other way around. So he said, in that case, Yevinta cholezet velo mitiabemet, which means we do the act of release, which is the shoe and all this act of, of but cannot do an act of levy right. We're going to discuss later a case of someone who do, does chalitza and he wants to go back and do yibum. But in general, that's the um, case. So let's clarify the situation. I'm just giving you some cases to, to make it even clearer. You have, let's start with the case of two sisters. You have Reuven and Shimon, they are sons of Yaakov. Okay? You have Rachel and Leah, that they are two sisters. Okay? Yaakov, excluding for that, also raped another woman. Now, Rachel and Leah, they are two sisters, they <coughs> brought a child. Rachel brought a daughter, and Leah brought a son. Now, the two sons that the children of Yaakov from the previous act of raping, from the previous um, some type of relation that you have, let's call them, call them for, for our case um, um, Dan and Naftali. Now Dan and Naftali come in. So the question is, can they do that? Obviously the answer is yes. Now how about Reuven and Shimon? Reuven and Shimon is the sons of Yaakov. And the sons of Yaakov, from when? From a different time, from different act, from different um, um, act of all kind of relations that they have in the past. Reuven came in and he married Rachel, that is basically Anusat Aviv. She was a result of a rape by his father, while he himself was raped in the past, but from different mother. Okay. The same applied to his brother, or depend how you call it, but he's a half a brother, that married Leah, that it's again Anusat Aviv. Now, it's sad to say, but Ruven and Shimon, it happens, die with no children. So the question is, those wives, can they come in before other brothers from different times, which is a half a brother, and can they go and do an act of levy right to those um, uh, childless wives? Now, Levi, in general, cannot do the yibum of the wife of Reuven. Obviously, why? Because it's his mother. And Shimon cannot do it because the other one, Rachel, because it's his mother. Now, on the other hand, Reuven can do it with the other side, with Leah. And Shimon can do it with Rachel. So what we see here, we see a lot of a scenario of Imo Anusat Aviv, the mother, or in our case it can be a half a mother, that she was a result of a rape. And you see, in that case, again, the issue is that something that we are all agree, or it's a disputation. The, so far, the result we explained yesterday we are dealing with cases in the 15 cases in the Mishnah that it's undisputable. But here you see a, a situation, we ask, is that disputable or not disputable? So if it's not disputable, it should be a case of the Mishnah, and that was the question of Levi. Rabbi, however, so far, said to him in a very strong language, you can't even think that it should be a part of the Mishnah because of what we said earlier. So we are two lines from top of page 10. So um, we said Rav Ada Karchina Kamei Rav Kana Mishmei the Rava Lolam Itle Le Rabbi Hani Klalei VeAchi Ka Amar Lei Imo Anusat Aviv Bekach Bechad Mashkachat La BeTartei Lo Mashkachat La. Okay. So again, for um, our understanding, I'm going today because we are short in time and it's a lot of materials. I'm going to read text and just summarize what they said. We said. In one scenario, it's applicable. In two, it's not. So, um, uh, how it's applicable? It's 
if you have one case of rape, which means the man uh, rape um, one single uh, woman while he have children from the previous life, and then we have all this act of labor-right marriage upon the death of the child. So this is the conflict, as we explained earlier, between the act of abomination from Leviticus 18 versus Deuteronomy 25 that tell us it's a mitzvah to do the act of labor right, versus a case of double rape with the, have, with the two different women and then each of them bore to him a child, then if these two women married to his two sons, which is in a way stepsons from the previous life, remember that men have two sons for our scenario that was from the previous uh, life. So those two sons, in a way, uh, the um, women are basically not even a stepmother for our discussions. Um, um, uh, Let's say that Yaakov we talked earlier, right? So let's say he has two sons that came from previous life. Makes no difference if it was a normal marriage relationship or a case of rape. And um, those two sons um, had total detachment to his action later on by raping two se separate uh, women, regardless if they are sisters or not. And, and those women um, uh, brought him a sons, each of them separate. Um, um, those previous two sons are basically can uh, go ahead and have um, um, some type of interaction with the children because their relationship to those women are basically um, in a total manner of detachment versus if it's um, a half a mother or stepmother, so then we enter the domain of a second degree of abomination. If you remember, that's what we said, the list of Leviticus 18. So he said, Yaakov shte achayot anas, if you have a case that Yaakov violated two sisters, achotashi hi yevimta mashkachatla. So you have here a sister who is her fellow yevama, can be found to be true. But he said, So, since you have this case of two sisters, why it's two sisters? Because you have um, um, the father Yaakov, he involved with a two separate um, relation of a woman, again, in a violation. But the children that come out of those women, um, it's... Um, it's turned to be because there are steps to the other sons, half steps, then automatically it's a, um, um, the relation to them it cannot be any act of um, Levirate marriage. And uh, for our discussion, it's, it's therefore it's not even a chalitza, not even any act of release, since it's in, on the list of abomination. riyotanas if you rape two different women that are not sisters, so that's a different So you see here, um, uh, since that's the reason why he was angry at him, because he said this cannot be part of the list. We said in the Mishnah, the list of the 15 cases involved with uh, basically undisputable to women that um, that they have a some type of a, a blood relativity, either by having relation on the first case, which is father and a child, father and a daughter, or the case that come after marriage, which is father with the daughter-in-law or mother-in-law, or shniot la'arayot, which is fa mother of the father, or um, or mother of the mother, etc., or the the wife of the uh, brother who basically act in a Levirate marriage but not apply to a brother that was born upon the death of the, of the husband, of the deceased husband. And if you remember, yesterday we used a current cases uh, in Israel. You have a young soldier that uh, got married at his early 20s and he get killed and the parents are still young and they brought uh, another child and a new child is basically sometimes even named after him while um, uh, <laughs> in a way uh, he is now in the domain of look at least on the surface as a uh, potential of liberate marriage 
well for sure is the age distance but um, since it's Shelo Ayabu Olamo, he was not, he wasn't there when the brother was alive. So for sure we explained that it's different stages and uh, we differentiate between the ages of uh, um, uh, 9, 13, etc. And we said, if you remember, based on Abba Shaul on page 39, that um, uh, we don't do that, um, at, least, at least not by Ashkenazim in Israel, because the chief rabbi had come to a conclusion that following Abba Shaul, that uh, most of the men that does an act of late right marriage have other motivation rather than to redeem the soul of the deceased. But for, back to our discussion. So now we go further and we try to explain what Rebbe tried to respond to Levi, who is basically an excellent scholar, and asked that question why we don't have number 16 on that list. Ravashi Amar, Le'olam, Leitle Le'Rabi, Hanei Klali. So Ravashi said, says, Actually, we can say that Rabbi does not accept those inclusive rules that Rabbi Chia taught. So I explain in my book, Birak Luma Berashi al Rashi here elaborates on that. And Rashi said, Klomar, Loteima Deha Lotane Imo Anusat Aviv. So at the beginning, if you remember yesterday on page 9, the Gemara said that um, um, we don't dealing with anything that is disputable. So therefore, it's not part of the Mishnah. Here, he said that um, um, all these different disputations we mentioned between Rabbi Yudah and Rabbanan and the other one that we mentioned, uh, Rabbi Chia, um, um, it's not relevant to our discussion. So basically, Rashi tried to deal here the way I understand this Rashi. You're welcome to read more. I wrote a lot here. Um, uh, that the whole concept of Imuan Usat Aviv, that it's a stepmother that was raped by his father, it's, um, it's not part of that list of Arayot, part list of abomination. And therefore, Biflugta Kamayre. We have here the disputation that goes back to the Tanaic disputation. So why Rebbe use this very strong language that he has, this um, student has no brain? The Kamale, Hachi Kamale, that's the story, that's what he tried to tell him. Why did, uh, did not, you did not infer from precise wording in the Mishnah, the Matnitin Rabbi Yudai, because the Mishnah is reflecting the opinion of Rabbi Yudai. If you remember, we mentioned earlier the Asar Anusat Abiyuda. Abiyuda said that marriage with a woman who was violated by one's father cannot um, uh, act in any manner of future marriage to his um, uh, former uh, children. The Katani, Shesh Arayot Hamurot. We explained originally in the Mishnah that we have a different list of um, violation. There are six that we call them stringent, six that are very... Um, strong prohibition and and among this list of the 15 the six since they are must be married to others and can never marry to a man paternal brother because the moment you have paternal brother which means if the husband die their co-wife are always permitted and the list as you remember in the mishnah imo if involved with a person's mother, again, we now we go to the first degree, which is a blood relative, the Eishet Aviv, the wife of his father, wife of his father in a modern language, it can be a, a either step, half step or full step, depending on how you take it, or if it's a rival, it can be a um, um, quarter step of mother, the Achot Aviv and the father's sister, and all the continuation of the list to, to the, get to the six. My Imo, what is the case of one mother? The Mishnah may, mentioned. Uh, if, so if you talk about mother, obviously, you just think just simply mother. But he said here, Aviv. <coughs> if you talk about a woman that his father got married, which means Hainu Eishet Aviv. So that's basically the Torah said in different locations that the person cannot have any act of relation for a wife of his father. And as we explained earlier, wife of his father, regardless um, in what manner his father have relation with that woman. 
El alav anusat aviv. You have to go to the case that one mother was violated by one's father. So here we go for different categories. So it means that the father have a different woman in his life, and here the uh, wife of his father that basically be, be thrown to his father told violation. So they can marry to others, but not that she may not be married to one's paternal brothers. Man shamant le da'at le'ayin svara. Who is the one who hold it? Rabbi Yudah. The asar banu sadavid. Rabbi Yudah voted against the sages that said that uh, that person cannot, is forbid, to take in a woman who was violated by one's father and marry her. So it means that Mishnah so far in our understanding follow Rabbi Yudah's opinion. Mishumach elotan elah. So now we understand why the first segment of the Mishnah does not list one's mother who was violated by his father among the women who is exempt, the co-wife from Chalitza and Yibum, both act. We can go by also by Rabbi Yudah, how the Avid Venasiv. Let's trace the situation that the person, guess what he did? He just did it, he violated. So even according to Rabbi Yudah, a person cannot marry to Anusat Aviv, he violated and he married her. So in effect, we sit in the Rini court and what we said? We said that even he is in a violation as far as the Kiddushin, as far as the act of marriage, we take it as a Kiddushin, Chalot Kiddushin, that it's really in effect. In effect, which means, and you study law, right, in Harvard, so you know many times, what happened is, that even a person does a violation, after the fact it happens, so you take that as a manner of what's already uh, consequential evidence, which means it's already happened, and you take it by the face value and just judge by that uh, result. So therefore, your view the whole that it's only a violation of Isur love, which means in a sense it's a light violation, because the Torah used the term lo yegale knaf aviv, a person should not um, uncover the nakedness of his father, so therefore, uh, it's not under the karet, karet meaning that social be cut off, which is a list of things. It's not under that category. So therefore, kidushim tof simba. So we act in the act of illusion. The i lo katani. So Rav Asher responded, said, the reason that we don't use that term of quote unquote mother, it's and as a uh, list of the 15, it's because as follows. He said, Amar le Rav Asher Rav Akana de i name lo mashkachet le Yaakov anas kalato. I give you another scenario that Yaakov uh, basically violated his daughter-in-law. And if you remember, we said in the introduction, the daughter-in-law is in a, what category? Help me! What's the category of daughter-in-law? Is the first, the second, the third, you remember that? Daughter-in-law versus daughter. What? I'll give you a hint. It's a... Uh, what? Second. Second. Yeah. Why second? Because it's only come, it's a good answer, it's only come toward a marriage to his son. Right. So it means it wasn't originally blood relative. Right. It just came because they married to the son, so he is now in Torah violation, but it's the second degree. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we said what? Now you have a beautiful child, you have a beautiful breeze, right? So what do you do next? So this son is the brother of the man, let's call him Ruven, from his father who met Reuven below Banim, and that son died childless. So, venafla la kamebra. So she now, in a sense, the violated woman fell before her son for a boom consideration. So she, in a way, is an erva. She is an act of abomination to her son. Umigo de iya sira tzarata, de iya sira Now, think in that manner. You go by the uh, consequential evidence. So since you have the first one, which is she is forbidden to him, and except from Yibum and Chalitza, her co-wife, which in our language is called rival, right, is also forbidden to him and exempt from Yibum and Chalitza. So it means that the Tana could have included one's mother in his list of women who exempt their co-wife, even according to the opinion of Rabbi Yudah, Amar lei, be'achvata de'etera kamayrei, 
באחוותא דאיסורא לא קמאי רי. The Tana deals with a relation of the brotherhood of a permitted nature, but it does not deal with the brotherhood of a prohibited nature. ואף על פי כן בדקה לוי במתניתם. But nevertheless, לוי incorporated this case of quote unquote one's mother who was, who was violated by one's father in the brighter collection, the Tana לוי. פעמים פותרת שרתה, sometimes she exempts her co-wife from יבום אל חלוצה, ופעמים אינה פותרת חלוצה, there are some cases that she's not exempt. How? כיצד? הייתה אמו נשואת אביו. If one's mother was married to his father, meaning, again, this is not a, by any means, first, and this is not a normal in our discussion of marriage matters, But it turns, as far as the halakha is concerned, we call that married, because it was an act of a relation between the two. Veniset le'achiv me'aviv umet. And she later married, quote-unquote, her, his, which is her son's parental brother, and he died childless. So you have here two cases of Levirite marriage. One from the first um, that the brother took um, uh, in effect, and one is the second. You remember the story in the Torah of Yehuda and the three sons, right? Mm-hmm. That's the simple case. So here you have the first son, which was Er, who married Tamar and he had no children. <coughs> and then Onan was basically, um, in a way, forced to marry uh, Tamar with, with not any intent, like Abba Shaul view in page 39. wasn't any intent to have children in perpetuation of the name of the deceased, but that was before the giving the Torah. And then Yehuda sent her away because he was afraid of Shelah. He thought that the blame is on Tamar and not on his sons. But here, Zo imo she'ein poter etzarata. This is the case of one's mother who does not exempt her co-wife since, by law, she was not married to the deceased. So page 10b. Even according to Rabbi Yudah, who prohibited a marriage of the one who was violated by his father, Aita imo anusat aviv, versus if one's mother was violated by his father and she was not married to a man who violated her, and then veniset le'achiv me'aviv umet, so now he's a brother from his father. From, uh, from, the person, from the deceased father and she married to that brother and unfortunately that brother passed away with no children this is the case of a person's mother who does not exempt her co-wife from Chalitza and Yibum since by law she was married to the deceased so what you see here even according to Rabbi Yudah who disputed this, the sages and he says that a woman that was violated by his father cannot marry, he agreed, that's the way Rashi takes that this type of kiddushin, this type of, of uh, um, marriage is uh, in effect because the only way she is prohibited to him it's called Isur Lav which is a light um, um, uh, violation we should not The, um, uncover the nakedness of the father that's the, the act of the abomination so he said the bottom line even you have in the list of the Mishnah a 15 cases of women that, um, that exempt their co-wife yesh lanu leosif 16 it is fitting for us to add a 16 woman kegon zu like the case that we just mentioned, which means you're dealing here with a Anusat Aviv, the stepmother that was originally was raped by his father. And that is basically a, considering an abomination for a person to go ahead and release her, or, meaning and married her in any form of consideration. That was the Levi claim. So since Levi challenged the Mishnah, that have on the old the list, Lady remember, is the early, early part of the Amorai era, which is right after the Tanai era, 
and he was for sure to a great Torah scholar. So he basically asked why we don't add number 16. So his question is still up in the air because as you see, this is a case of abomination and should not act uh, in any form of Levite marriage. For those who come late, I just want to remind you the concept. The concept is we have a conflicted text in the Torah. We have a list in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 of abomination. All this list we read on Yom Kippur afternoon. Um, um, a person that prohibited in a certain uh, act of uh, sexual relation in different degree. And uh, the other source is Deuteronomy 25 that tells us that it's a mitzvah for the brother, uh, surviving brother of a man who died childless to go ahead and levy right a marriage to his sister-in-law. So you see in one place sister-in-law is prohibited, one place you see the sister-in-law it's a mitzvah, it's not just prohibited, uh, uh, it's even a mitzvah. And we see a very much a resonance to that uh, manner in the book of Ruth. Even it wasn't real sister in that manner, but you see the act of uh, extending Leverite marriage by the way Boaz acted toward Ruth. And we are now uh, have the Mishnah that give us a list when um, those act of Leverite um, uh, marriage is not applied and exempt those women and the co-wives and the rivals and the second co-wife in a different degree. And we explain that there are different level, different category. Um, so we basically try to reconcile all those lists of the 15, and we ask in a particular case of a mother that was um, have relation with the father or stepmother um, in conjunction to act of Leverite marriage. And if you tell me that this Leverite marriage um, is not um, permitted in any form, the next question is that she needs any form of Halitza, mean act of release, since it's not applicable here. And the answer is no, because in this case, one connected to the other. We don't talk about the case that the person already uh, did Halitza, and now we want to retroactively go back and do act of Leverite marriage with that, with that woman. That's something that we're going to discuss later. So now, the Gemara challenged the point of Levi. And they said, since you want to add number 16, Amar le Reish Lakish le Rabbi Yochanan, le Levi. Reish Lakish said to Rabbi Yochanan, according to Levi, who said that the Tanah teaches even about cases that will occur only if, quote-unquote, the deceased marry his wife unlawfully. So he said, Litne, so let him also teach that the woman exempt her co-wife from Halitza and Yibum in the following cases, which is, HaCholetz Leivimto VeChazar VeKidsha. If someone is a man whose brother died childless. Okay, so simple case. You have Reuven and Shimon, and Reuven married a, um, a woman. He died, can be in many different uh, scenarios. He passed, and now uh, his brother um, um, Shimon come in, and he performed Halitza to his Yevama, which means he basically refused to marry the, the he's a surviving brother, so refused to marry the wife of the deceased, and therefore it was act of Halitza, his release, right? And then he returned and he betrothed her. Betrothed her, the way that we put this case, it's uh, in our understanding, it's, um, it wasn't an act of um, a person who come and ask the rabbi, can I go back? And since originally, remember many times, most of the cases we have in discussion, talking not to so educated people. So this guy originally thought that it's a mitzvah for him. But then he figure out, for all kinds of reasons, he doesn't want to do it. So he release, And then he changed his mind. Right? So now what do you do? And, and it's not just that. The question is, you go to the next step, which is, this fellow, after he have relation with her, who met below Banim, and he, in turn, died childless. So you have now the two sons of Yehuda already in the Torah, this is a good example. Onen now died childless, so that the woman falls before his brother, to whom she had previously fallen when her first husband died, for Halitza and Yibum. If she was a co-wife, both she and her co-wife, meaning the man of more than one, are exempt from Halitza and Yibum, the Migo, the Yasurat, Saratanami Asira. Since you tell me that, that the original Ivama is forbidden to the surviving brother under 
the penalty of karet, and Torah said that soul shall be cut off. Her co-wife is also forbidden to them in Yebum and, and is exempt from Chalitza. Marley, why? Lefi she'eina betzara tzara. She is not a subject to the rule of a co-wife, co-wife. You have two, the second category of co-wife, because it's again, is a subsequent or, uh, um, uh, relation between the, the, the uh, uh, different um, children that come out of different act of marriage. The Lamele, you go to some sect of Mormons out in the West, you see situations like that just in, in the concept of understanding. You know, the guy that went to jail, um, I don't remember the name, that has, what did they say, 80 women or whatever. <laughs> so anyway, the, the key is that over there they married many and they have children for many. So if you try to build in those cases, it's very simple in the sense of putting together the puzzle. You just have here cases of half and half brother and half sisters and half, and especially if it's come out of intimate <coughs> marriage or violation of marriage, then you go to the next step, which is when exactly you say it's a mitzvah to do levy right, and when you tell me that it's an abomination from uh, going there. So Amar Lei, Velei Malei Chayavei Lavin Him, Vechayavei Lavin Bnei Chalitza V'Ibum Ninu, which means uh, since they are in the, yes, it's a negative commandment, you should not uncover the nakedness of the father, but it's not in the form of that soul shall be cut off. As we explained, it's not in that level of violation. So therefore, women who are pro uh, prohibited by a mere negative commandment are still um, eligible for either chalitza or yibum. So he said, "Lidvarav kamre lelididi chayav elavi marush toev motay." V'chayav elavi bnei chalitza v'yibum ninu el alida chayav kritot ninu lefi shena betzarat zarata. So basically, we said that, if you remember the day before yesterday, we explained that there are different punishment, and we're judging by different form of punishment to understand the level of violation. So for example, if someone is under the category, which we said in Yom Kippur, skilas refayerek vachenek, that the Torah used the term of stoning, strangulation, or all that, that's the <laughs> highest category. If the Torah used to say um, heavenly judgment, which is said, that soul shall be cut right. off, that's lower. And if it's not, it's just a negative commandment, but it's not act of any punishment in the form of writing the Torah, that's even lower. So here, since this is a, it's not a subject to the rule of a co-wife of a co-wife, so therefore that's his mindset, his idea that we consider that, that act of betrothed as a, as a accepted marriage, and therefore automatically the moment you're accepting that marriage, there, it's extending the um, act of abomination to anyone who's the step child from the previous time. Itmar Acholes leaving to vechazar vekidsha. Acholes leaving to vechazar vekidsha. Okay, I just want to comment before I continue on. I wrote several pages in my book. There is a Rashi here that, uh, again, we don't have the time. Rashi said here, so I brought here the Avnei Miluim in Kuf Ein Dalet in Briskerov that dealing here with the whole concept of how far you go with um, level of violation because in one hand the Torah used the term um, mitzvah mitzvah to do act of Yibum act of Leverite marriage um, versus the Torah said it's a violation I brought here all different commentators I brought the etc. You're very welcome to read more. It's it's uh, it's a lot to say. Anyway, that's based on Rashi which means the women who are prohibited by mere negative commandment are eligible for either chalitza or yibum. Itmar, So here is a case we mentioned earlier: a person who performs chalitza, meaning he's out of the business. He just said, I'm not interested in, in, in uh, have an act of Leverite marriage to this woman, to my uh, sister-in-law, right? And then um, return and betroth her. Amari Shlakish Chayav al Chalutza Karet. He says, so since he go back and he have, um, he went back and he have relation with her, so now he's in the, uh, under the Karet, it's liable to what the Torah said, that soul shall be cut off. Ve'achim. How, how, how about other brothers, which means, again, 
We have several children. A person passed away. Let's say the Reuven, Shimon, and Levi, three brothers. Reuven passed away. They, Shimon decided not to marry the, uh, the wife of Reuven. He received Chalitza. Now, what happened to Levi? Levi, the, the automatically she released, she can go out and marry anybody she wished to, right? Levi come in, and he is now in the list of abomination, and he have relation with her, right? So he said, But the other brothers are liable for karet for taking the chalutza. Al concerning the chalutza co-wife, if it's more than one, meaning the original brother have more than one wife, right? Ben who ben achin chayavim al atzara karet. Regardless, both uh, he, the one who did Chalitza, and the other brothers, which is, for our discussion, is Levi and, Mo, and, uh, and onward, um, are liable for Karet for taking the co-wife. The Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Ben Hu, Ben Achim, and Anna Chayvim Lo'ala Chalitza Karet, Lo'ala Chalitza Karet. Rabbi Yochanan disputed and said, no, neither him uh, liable for Karet, nor his brothers uh, taking co-wife. The, the, one of the commentaries that said about um, uh, the anger of Reuven in the Torah, that he switched the bed of the uh, mother, it's uh, one of the ideas is that they are sisters. There's uh, some school of thought that it wasn't just Rachel and Leah, it was Bila and Zilpa, also sisters, also daughter of Laban. So that's one of the commentaries say that's the reason of the anger that Reuven was involved. Yeah. According to Rabbi Yochanan, both him and all the brothers are not in violation of law Yivne. And that's applied to both. Soon you see the reason for Rabbi Yochanan. We start with Reish Lakish. Yes, you know, there are relatives. You know, Reish Lakish Mary, uh, uh, you know, he was a big... Uh, okay, you know the story, man, right? right? Strong man, strong. a big uh, robber. Rabbi exactly. Yochanan said, promise him that if he do teshuva, he will marry um, uh, his, um, sister. his sister and they became best friends. It's a long story. Anyway, my Tamad Reish Lakish. The text said, who shall not build his brother's house? Since he's not built, he cannot do it. So this is a prohibition against his taking the chalutza and does not carry the correct penalty. Uh, meaning the sister-in-law is, is uh, forbidden to him under the penalty of karet, but that's during his brother's lifetime, which means as long as his brother is alive, so here you have one of the list of the violation in Leviticus 18 that he cannot marry. The, so let's say Reuven is very ill. Now Shimon wants to marry her. It's a violation because his brother is alive. Now that she was widow and he did chalitza with her, so she's a subject of negative commandment. That's a different level. So he, meaning the one who did the chalitza, so he is one who is the subject to the negative commandment that of shall not build. That's what we said in the, in the book of Deuteronomy 25. Because the Torah is kind of mad at him. You have a, a, a deceased a, um, um, a future. Uh, it's all depend upon you to have a perpetuation of the soul. I did not do that in a sense you don't care. You're selfish. You don't care for your brother. It's a continuation of a name. So it's like the Torah put it like a word of a curse or a word, strong words against the brothers that against the brother that, that didn't want to do it, right? So here, Val um, Echav, but his brothers who did not do chalitza remain subject to the brother's wife prohibition as before, as they prohibited to carry the correct penalty. Ha. But in regards to a co-wife, co-wife remains subject to what? <coughs> to the brother's wife prohibition as it was before. The Rabbi Yochan, so Rish Lakish will basically understand. Now we go the other way around. Rabbi Yochan hold mi'i kamidi. Can it uh, possible mi'i kara? Because the first brother, originally speaking, buy a high chalitz, we buy a high chalitz. If this surviving brother desired uh, he could have done chalitza, and if, if that surviving brother desired that he will have been chalitza, we buy the high chalitza, we buy the high chalitza. He can choose. As we said many times, the whole idea of labor right marriage applies only to one. So if a man marry many, so the act of, uh, of labor right marriage applies, and he have no children for neither one of those women. So it's only one he needs, uh, it, it applies. So in a sense, he can pick that and since he, he um, 
he picked so that he can go the other way around in act of chalitza and it's out. Uh, uh, meaning he cannot do yibum uh, uh, or chalitza from one woman and then he go ahead and levirate right the other. The others are basically in the act of violation. Uh, all the other um, um, wives of his um, deceased brother, Vashta Akai Alei Bekaret, and now he's a subject of Karet by taking the other widow, and his brothers are subject to Karet even at taking the Chalutza. So certainly he said that that's unreasonable, and that's the reason why Rabbi Yochanan objected. Ela but he, the one who does Chalutza, perform the in the sense of. I am the agency of all my other brothers, Iush Lichuta de Katsarakavit. So she, the Chalutza, performed the agency of the co wife. Why? Because since the Chalutza is performed on behalf of all the brothers and all the co wives, because as we said, it can be done only with one, both the one who does Chalutza and his brothers are subject to the negative commandment of uh, the Torah said in Deuteronomy 25 he shall not be healed. And therefore, this pertains to whether they take the chalutza or co-wife and is exempt from karet. And here, the last part, we're going to conclude. Rabbi Yochan challenged Reish Lakish, and he said, A person does the act of chalutza. Ruven and Shimon, Ruven passed away, no children. Shimon came in, and he decided not to do a levy right marriage. He does the chalutza, release, goodbye. Then all of a sudden he come back and he betrothed her. He betrothed her, and this Shimon, the second brother, is passed, umet, no longer among the living, he is childless. So now she basically it's an issue for her to do levy right because you don't do levy right twice. Okay? One hand. On the other hand, the act of releasing her to go out and marry others, she requires chalitza from one of his surviving brothers. So, with that mindset, now we go back to the original disputation. According to me, meaning Rabbi Yochanan, who says that the chalutza is prohibited by other brothers by mere negative commandment, I understand why she requires chalitza from one of the brothers. For a woman who is uh, uh, forbidden to the Avam, uh, negative commandments uh, require chalitza. According to Yorish Lakish, why you need to bother to release her? The Yevama was forbidden to the Yavam, uh, since it's under the penalty of the Karet, that social be cut off, is exempt for both, Chalitza and Ibu. Good morning, Dr. Friedman. So, according to reasoning, to consider the later clause, so every same brighter. Imagine the stay, uh, case of a person who's a wicked. One of the brothers, he came in, and what did he do? He, he said, I don't care about uh, Torah law or anything. I am going ahead, and what? He, he betrothed her. And la alav klum. She does not require anything from him, which means that she may marry another man without receiving a divorce from this one, because the betrothal was ineffective. The ichayave loving nino. But now, if she is prohibited by other brothers, by a mere negative commandment, am I in a love clum? Why does she not require anything, which means a letter, a bill of divorce, a get of the one who's betrothal? Because his betrothal is surely effective. Am I Rav Sheshet? Rav Sheshet responded, he said, Seifa Atan, the last, later clause of, the, of the, this Brayta, it's follow the Rabbi Akiva. Why? The Amar, Ein Kiddushim Tofsin Bechayevei Lavin. Rabbi Akiva said, no, 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 no. If the Torah said that this is a negative commandment and you cannot have relation with that woman, so if a person, in effect, betrothed that, the Kiddushim, the act of betrothal, does not take effect between man and woman, prohibited to him by a negative commandment. So therefore, we said, just a few lines on the next daf. So uh, the Gemara accepted that and it said, Kashia. This is really a difficult concept because Rav Sheshet's uh, resolution to the Brayta is difficult, that's the way Rashi said, and therefore the contradiction between uh, its clauses remain unresolved, rem uh, remains to be uh, resolved, and until this occurred, it cannot be cited in support to either Rabbi Yochan and Reish Lakish. So basically what we're going to continue 
is to see how far we go with this disputation between Rabbi Yochan and Reish Lakish, um, uh, especially since we talk here about not rabbinic, but biblical. Shuloim, Malachai, Shuloim, Malachai.